Round three of season six gave us the most action-packed race of the season so far, with the strategy and capitalizing of attack mode playing a huge part in how the race unfolded. So with that in mind, let's take a look at how the extra power mode changed the race in Santiago. Around 10 minutes into the race, Mitch Evans in the lead activated attack mode, the first driver in the front pack to do so. The early move showed confidence from the Panasonic Jaguar racing team and could grant the ability of getting ahead in the clean air and building a big gap against the battling cars behind that were losing time. A strategy we saw work for Alexander Sims in the previous race, but it came with the risk of being outpowered during those energy crucial closing stages of the race. So it was up to Mitch and the team to pull off the drive that would stop that from happening. With the qualifying structure being how it is in Formula E, it's not often that multiple sets of teammates start next to, or at least within a few places from each other on the grid and a more team-wide attack mode strategy can be considered. In Santiago, we'd see how this would play out for the Rocket Venturi, Mercedes-Benz EQ, and DS Chichita drivers. First up was the Rocket Venturi cars of Eduardo Mortara and Felipe Massa. Mortara was the first of the two to activate, losing the position to his teammate, but when Massa activated a lap later, Mortara took the position back. So, with both drivers in attack mode, this would, in theory, allow both Venturi cars to move up the grid together maximizing the potential for team points. Meanwhile, the two Mercedes drivers entered attack mode together for the same reason, but only one of these teams would see this strategy succeed. The first of the extra power overtakes at the front of the pack came when Eduardo Mortara passed Oliver Turvey to take fourth, and then looked to close the gap on Gunther in third. A mass activation of attack mode followed from the drivers behind, the two DS Chichita drivers in formation, followed by Sebastian Buemi, who was affected the most by going offline and fell victim to the two Mercedes already in the extra power mode. So at this point, the majority of the front half of the field are in attack mode, with varying times remaining, with the exception of Pascal Verlan in second and Max Gunther in third, who had opted for a different strategy and had held off their uses thus far. This would soon change as Gunther entered attack mode for his first use and was passed by Mortara with less than 30 seconds left of his, quickly finding himself in a Rocket Venturi attack mode sandwich. But with Max now having a fresh four minutes of extra power at his disposal, the aim was to hold off the attacking Massa and take back the position he lost to Mortara, a task that would showcase again the pace he had all weekend. And don't worry about them going over the, the blue painted area. That is not out of bounds, you can use that. Pascal Veyland in front, taking advantage of the action behind, then finally activates without losing a position. But then had Max Gunther close behind to deal with, also with extra power. The move didn't come straight away, but would eventually, alongside a battery temperature issue, lose Pascal his place on the podium. Felipe Massa had 20 seconds remaining of attack mode and the extra power over Mortara in front. What seemed like a safe move to pass his teammate ended up with the two drivers battling and both losing time. Oh, they can't be fighting each other here coming into turn nine. That's costing them both time, That's really. That's a bit silly, really. Especially when one is in attack mode. Exactly. Mitch Evans entered his second use of attack mode and kept hold of the lead as most of the drivers behind finished their first. But the risky strategy to have used both activations with half an hour left of racing would come back to bite him when the drivers behind would be pushing in their second use, whilst Mitch would be needing to maintain energy. Further drama for the Venturis as Mortara enters his second attack mode and dives up the inside of Massa, causing the two to come together, almost forcing Massa into the wall, losing three places and costing the team even further. Antonio Felix da Costa passed his teammate Jean-Eric Verne when Jev activated for the second time. But Da Costa gave the position back shortly after with the team in mind. Okay, so uh, let's have going turn one. Turn Co one. Copy, copy. A gesture that was not reciprocated later as Da Costa took his second attack mode. He lost the position to Massa when activating, but not for long as the extra power helped Da Costa blast past Massa and he soon found himself on the back of Jev, who wasn't prepared to gift the same favor he received earlier and let his teammate pass. It's the first and the last time I let Jeff pass. Later on in the race, Max Gunther used attack mode to have a crack at Evans for the lead. Can he do it? All oh. the way around. That'll be a massive move if he can, and there's a bit of a nudge, and Gunther now tries to fight back. No luck on the first attempt, but with less than 15 seconds of extra power remaining, he succeeds to take the lead. Good job, good job. We need temperature and energy when you cross the line. The rest of the race played out with the action and overtaking going on right up until the chequered flag. And although the attack modes were complete with 12 minutes left to race, the effects of the strategies used, both positive and negative, contributed right until the very end.
If Mitch Evans hadn't used both his activations so early, he may have created more space for himself later in the race, lessening the struggle that came with energy management and the faster cars attacking from behind. In Evans' own words, the Jag team shot themselves in the foot with their strategy and left them finishing third, having started on pole. Also not helped by Evans having a potential software problem, which he claims left him blind. We got some serious work to you guys, that was an extremely poor performance. It was another masterclass in strategy from BMW Iandretti Motorsport that saw Sims win the previous race and now Gunther take the top step of the podium in Santiago and become the youngest driver to win in Formula E history. Yes, come on! Thank you so much, amazing job guys. Attack Mode showed us again the impact it has on the racing in this championship. The extra 5 kilowatt on top of the 225 available last season is making a real difference and alongside the new usable energy rules, the strategy is proving itself more crucial and potentially devastating when done wrong than ever. Next up, we head to Mexico and a circuit that left us with energy management madness last season. But with a slightly different track configuration this year, could we see more of the same? We'll find out on the 15th of February and you can find out where to watch below.